So we're going to very briefly talk about an older patient because I want to get to some of the excellent questions you all have sent in. Um, and so this is a 60-year-old gentleman. Um, he has UC. Um, he's been doing well on azathioprine for years, um, 2.5 milligrams per kilogram. He did have one prior corticosteroid course to induce remission. Uh, and he presents with some worsening diarrhea, um, and he's intermittently seen blood mixed in with his stool. Um, and on assessment, his labs actually look pretty darn good, but he does have his C. diff is negative and he does have uh, a flex sig and his Mayo score is 2, so he does have some moderate inflammation. You can see his endoscopy pictures here. Uh, I did measure thiopurine metabolites on him and these were uh, appropriate. Um, and so in terms of his prior vaccination history, he had it all. He had all his childhood vaccines, but he had not yet had adult pneumonia vaccine, but he had received the live zoster vaccine about five years previously and he sometimes gets annual influenza vaccine. Um, and so really we talk about some medication options for moderate to severe UC, a whole host of them are listed here, something we could initiate. I, I did want to hit one point home, Frank, uh, you, I think you had mentioned this, but he had received the live zoster vaccine five years ago. Uh, what does that mean? What should we do for him now? So again, according to the recommendations, he's eligible to receive the inactive vaccine and we would certainly give him a prescription for that. Okay. And then based on Gil's recommendation, clearly he had never received a pneumococcal vaccine, so we're going to put him through the, both of the series with PCV13 first, and then um, discuss these various therapies um, for treatment of his UC. Now, um, uh, Gil, this is an older gentleman. Um, he's been on az azathioprine a long time. Um, do you have concerns about azathioprine in, in an older individual? Do you use uh, much azathioprine over the age of 65, 70? Um, I don't. I don't use much azathioprine outside of its immunogenicity mm -hmm. advantage in patients treated with anti-TNF therapy in general. Um, but if somebody's on azathioprine comes to me like this gentleman, I, I do think carefully about whether the risks of uh, staying on it are outweighed by the benefits of staying on it. Right. And I think it's a case-by-case -case kind of situation. Um, I, I literally had a scenario last week. Um, I took a, a, an older woman, she was in her 70s, doing well on azathioprine for 12 years. I took her off of it, she was doing fine on mesalamine, and uh, I took her off of it about six months ago, and she ended up being hospitalized with a severe flare just last week. So, and didn't tell me that things were getting worse over the last two months. So I presume that has something to do with it. I, you know, for some people, they're doing well on it, I wouldn't necessarily mess with right. it. No, and that's my practice as well. You know, I, I do use um, azathioprine, but, but I worry about it in the very young um, because of the hepatosplenic T-cell lymphoma risk, and I worry about it in the very old because as soon as you have a much higher baseline rate of lymphoma, adding a relative risk on top of that becomes much more common. And so in this scenario, he's flaring, so obviously we need to get him off of it and onto a, a different therapy. Um, but even when they're not flaring, I'll often do what Gil did, and I'll try to dose reduce see how they do, get them to a lower dose, and if possible, and you see, get them over to a mesalamine or uh, an alternate agent that may not have the same uh, lymphoma risk. But again, if they're on it and they're, they're stable, you have to have a risk-benefit discussion with them. Some of my patients say, this therapy has been wonderful for me. I know the risks. I want, uh, you know, I, I certainly want to stay on it. Something else I would add, again, I would also taper it, and I would <clears throat> educate the patient about the signs of, uh, of relapse. And, Often what we'll do is actually get a fecal calprotectin on someone four months after stopping the azathioprine because I too am concerned about lymphoma and opportunistic infections in, including shingles in these patients. So if we're going to do it, we'll taper it off slowly, we'll go over the risk and benefits and then just to kind of reassure myself approximately four months after they're off of it, they don't want to have a flexible sigmoidoscopy, if they're not due for a colonoscopy, then I'll do a fecal calprotectin but again I think Obviously, Gil advised this woman to call if he was having problems because in my experience for those patients that we have gone off, if you catch them early, you put them right back on their azathioprine and they go back into remission. I, I've had the same experience. So I certainly am going to ask this gentleman some of these same questions. Um, the key here, and we talked a little bit about this already, but he is interested in joining a mission to West Africa. So you really do have to think about yellow fever, and I, would, I agree that I would get a travel clinic involved to consider that. These are the appropriate vaccines um, to consider in this uh, gentleman. 
And so when we think about um, the risks, again, it's these same risks, the herpes zoster, the influenza, the pneumonia. Because of his age, he's at higher risk than my, my younger um, patient just based on age. Um, remember that uh, opportunistic infections and serious infections, um, IBD patients are at increased risk for both um, opportunistic and serious infections. But remember that many other factors play a role. There are external factors such as immunosuppression, which we've been talking about, or geographic clustering. But inherent to the patient, Remember that age really does have a markedly increased risk um, for opportunistic infections, comorbidity, malnutrition. Um, so these are factors that we also need to consider. So in summary, for this case, uh, we had a risk-benefit discussion. Um, he actually, uh, we talked about various agents, but he had been on an oral medication. He wanted to stay on an oral medication. Um, and this allowed us to uh, potentially avoid corticosteroids in terms of starting tofacitinib. Um, but we did give him the inactivated zoster vaccine. He got the Prevnar 13. He got the influenza. The poor man left with many sticks. Um, and then I had recommended that until he could talk to a travel clinic, he really needed to not um, go to uh, West Africa because I was not going to vaccinate him uh, against yellow fever.